so my name's Emily Holt. Um, I'm an environmental archaeologist and a zoo archaeologist, and I work on the neuragic culture, which is a culture of Bronze Age Sardinia. Archaeologists frequently use all their senses when uh, they're conducting projects. So, for example, we will often listen for the different sounds that um, the sediment makes when we're excavating it, when we're like scraping our trowel across the sediment, or sometimes we'll tap it to see um, what kind of sound it makes so we can tell how compacted it is. Uh, so that's one way that we really get very interactive um, with our archaeology. I once worked with a woman who said she could smell the difference between different layers of sediment when she was excavating, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, and a big way that we use, um, particularly the, the, our, our taste kind of, um, is when we're excavating and we have to tell the difference between different types of artifacts. So when we're excavating, a lot of what we find is animal bone, pottery, and then of course a lot of just rocks. And um, sometimes when you find a very small fragment of something like that, it can be hard to tell the difference and you know, try and figure out if it's something archaeological that we should keep or if some, it's just a rock we can toss. So archaeologists will often tap it to the tip of their tongue to see how, how much it sticks. And uh, animal bone sticks a lot, pottery sticks less than animal bone, and rock sticks less than pottery. So that's one way that we can tell and uh, discard uh, rocks that we don't need and keep animal bones and pottery. That's a great question. Uh, there have definitely been lots of instances of climate change in the past and uh, lots of examples of both failure to adapt and the successful adaptation. For example, in the neuragic culture in Sardinia, um, I, in my research, I feel like I'm seeing evidence that they're changing where they live in response to changing climate and changing envir local environmental conditions. Um, overall, I think I would say that examples of successful adaptation are actually uh, more common than um, outright failure to adapt. Humans are very adaptable. Um, and people adapt to climate change frequently by changing where they live, uh, changing what resources they use, how they use them, what their economic strategies are, um, and, uh, and also changing how they organize their societies. Uh, something to keep in mind with that, though, is those are some big changes, and cultures can, can appear uh, quite different once they have successfully adapted to climate change than what they, they looked like before the climate change occurred. I, I really feel very positive about our um, ability to adapt to contemporary climate change. I think potentially we are in a, a great position to do that. But I think we need to keep in mind that successfully ad adapting to the climate change that's happening now may mean that we need to accept making some very big cultural changes. Well, protecting yourself from the elements is always important for archaeologists. Um, and on some projects, that might mean parkas, or it might mean rain gear, or it might mean really good hiking boots. Um, but definitely, it often means sun protection. Uh, on my project on Sardinia, we definitely have to deal with a lot of uh, very hot, uh, dry, sunny conditions. Um, so I always wear sunscreen. But in addition, I, I practice a lot of other ways of protecting myself from the sun. I'm, I'm actually wearing one of my dig shirts right now. It has um, built-in SPF. Um, and it has long sleeves, which I can roll down to protect my arms if I want to. I always wear long pants. And I never forget to wear a big broad-brimmed hat to protect my face and ears as well.